Hi guys, I hope that you're well. Um, I made this video because I want to go through a different chapter of our course for those of you who want to have a bit more of a challenge to, to work on something by yourself. Okay, so this is not for the rest of the class. This is really for those people who feel like they want a bit of a push. We're going to look at chapter 12, differentiation. Uh, and today what I'm going to do is I'm not going to explain what differentiation is, why it works or anything like that. I'm just going to show you how to do it for basic cases. So at the moment, just suspend your idea of why am I doing this? What does it mean? Just focus on doing it. And then in the next couple of videos, I'll explain to you what it means and why we're doing it. OK, so have a look at this. We've got polynomials here, x squared, x cubed, x to the 4 and x to the 5. How do we differentiate these? Well, to differentiate, firstly, the differentiation is always written as dy dx. And what I've got to do is I've got to bring this power here, the power 2, down to the front. And I reduce that power by 1. So watch here. I bring the 2 down to the front and my power 2 gets reduced. It becomes 1. Okay, let's try it again with x cubed. So dy dx, what's that going to be equal to? Well, I'm going to bring that 3 down to the front and I'm going to reduce the power 3 by 1. So that will give me 3x squared. We can do it again with x to the 4. I bring the power 4 down to the front. So I get dy dx is equal to 4. And I reduce the power by 1. So it's 4x cubed. And I think you could probably tell me, hopefully by now, what you think y equals x to the 5 will give. Well, again, we bring the power down to the front. 5x we reduce the power by 1, so 5x to the 4. So at the moment, just notice this pattern, notice how to do it. As I say, we'll try to explain what this all means later. So the general rule, if I have a polynomial, right, which is expressed as uh, x to the power of n, where n could be any number, how do I differentiate that? Well, I bring the n down to the front, so it becomes a coefficient, and I reduce uh, the power n by 1. Right? So it differentiates to look like that. Well, now let's just try it with some other examples. Let's say we've, we've now got, for example, 3x squared. How would I differentiate that? Well, again, just as we did in the previous examples, I bring the power 2 down to the front and multiply it at the front, and I reduce that power by 1. So I'm going to get 2 times by 3x to the power of 1. Okay, so I bring the power 2 down to the front and I reduce the power by 1. So in the end, I'm going to get 6x. Let's try the next example. I've got uh, y is 5x cubed. So what will dy dx be? dy dx will be I bring the power 3 down to the front times it by 5. So I get 3 times by 5 and I reduce the power by 1. 5x squared. So multiplying through, I get 15x squared. Okay, and last example. Okay, here we've got a fraction and a negative sign, but it really doesn't make any big difference. I'm going to bring that power down to the front, and I'm going to reduce the power by 1. So dy dx will equal to, well, I'm going to have 4 times by minus a half x to the power of 3, right? I've reduced that power. And again, if I just expand that, 4 times by minus a half is going to be minus 2x cubed. And hopefully you should see that as you get really good at this, then you can just do the operation uh, uh, directly. You don't have to worry about uh, multiplying, um, uh, writing out the multiplication, right? You'll just get quite fast at it. Okay, so what does that rule tell us? That rule basically tells us that if we've got some constant value before our polynomial, right? So kx to the n, right? So it could be like 3x to the n or 5x to the n or minus a sixth x to the n, doesn't matter. You just differentiate as normal, right? So this x to the n becomes nx to the n minus 1, and you just multiply through by your constant, right? If you're not sure what that means, here's just a simple example. If y is equal to x squared, that differentiates to give dy dx is equal to 2x. 
And then if I consider just another function, let's say y is equal to 5x squared, that differentiates to give y dx 10x. So if you see here, what's the difference between these two functions? Well, this is just five times my first function. And so the differentiation is also just five times my first. OK. All right, let's keep going. Before we uh, press on, we just need to think about how we would differentiate y equals x, for example. How would that look like? Well, here what we've got is actually we've just got the same rule as before, because uh, when we've got y is equal to x, we can just think of this as y equals x to the 1. So if I differentiate that dy dx, I can bring the 1 down to the front, and I reduce the power of x by 1. So that's going to become x to the power 0. And hopefully by now you should know from your work in indices that anything to the power of 0 is 1. So the dy dx here is just 1. So if I differentiate x, I'm going to get just 1. Okay. And with this, what if y is just some constant value, right, like 6 or 7 or minus 15 or 32.5, whatever? Well, if I differentiate that, dy dx, I will always get 0. Okay, so if I differentiate a constant value, I'm going to get 0. Now, this is probably going a bit quick, but just pay attention to, to, to what that rule is saying. Sorry, beg your pardon. If we've got uh, y equals uh, kx, right, so just some, some multiple of x, then when we differentiate it, we'll just get k. So for example, if I've got 3x, it differentiates to give 3. If I've got 5x, it differentiates to give 5. If I've got minus 2.5x, it differentiates to give minus 2.5, okay? Uh, and if I've got any constant value, if y is just equal to, to some value like 7, 25, minus 342, right? It doesn't matter what it is. If it's a constant value, it differentiates to give 0. Okay. All right. Well, uh, let's, let's press on. Let's see if we can uh, do uh, something a little bit more complicated. Let's have a look at this. Okay. Here, what have we got? y equals 4x squared minus 7x. Now, notice that what we've got here is we've really just got two functions added up, right? We've got uh, one function here, 4x squared, and we've got another function here, minus 7x, right? They're just combined. How does, how does that look like if we differentiate that? Well, dy dx is going to equal to, I just take each function in turn. How do I differentiate the 4x squared? Well, I bring the 2 down to the front, right? So 2 times by 4 is going to be 8, and I reduce the power by 1. So I'm going to get 8x there. And then what I do is I differentiate the minus 7x. And if I differentiate minus 7x, remember, I'm just going to be left with minus 7. So there, all you have to do is if you're going to differentiate a function which is actually uh, the, the, uh, the addition or the sum of several other functions, then what you do is you just differentiate each one in turn and add it, right? So 4x squared minus 7x. If I differentiate the 4x squared, I get 8x. And if I differentiate the minus 7x, I get minus 7, right? So I just take each bit of the function in turn, differentiate it, and add it up. And you can see the same here, right? Here I've got minus a third x to the 4 plus 12. So how am I going to differentiate that? Well, firstly, I differentiate the bit in yellow. So I bring the 4 down, so I get minus 4 thirds. And I reduce the power by 1, I get x cubed. And then I differentiate the second part, which is 12. And you should remember from the previous rule that if I've got a constant value, that always differentiates to give 0. Right? So in the end, that dy dx is minus 4 thirds x cubed. Right? Just to show you again, right? I've got this part here differentiates to that, and that part there differentiates to that. Okay, so if you wanted to write it as a rule, uh, the rule would be something like this. If, if y is equal to a function of x plus another function of x, right, two separate functions, if I differentiate it, 
then what I'm really doing is I'm differentiating the function f, so I'll just call that the f dx, and the function of g, which I'll call dg dx, and I just add them up, right? In other words, I differentiate f, and I differentiate g, and add them up, okay? All right, well, I'm just gonna do one last thing with you, all right, and then hopefully you'll be able to do a bit of the exercise here. So let's have a look at this. How would we differentiate y equals the square root of x. Now, I just want you to pause for a second and have a think about that yourself. How would you differentiate that? Well, you should know now from your indices work in chapter three that the square root of x can be written as a power, x to the power of a half. And because that's true, when we differentiate, we're just going to use the same indice rule. Right? So I'm going to bring my power down to the front. Right? So I bring the half down to the front. And I'm going to reduce that power by 1. So I'm going to have a half minus 1, which is minus a half. Right? So again, just to be really, really clear, what have I done? I've brought the power down to the front. And I've reduced the power by 1. And so now you should be able to see, well, this is a half x to the minus half, what does that mean? Well, it's one upon, or one upon two, the square root of x. If you just can't remember that from your indices rule, then you need to recall that the half means the square root, right? So that's, that's that bit. And the, uh, the, the negative number there, the minus, means one over, right? It's the fraction, okay? Last one before we, before we close, okay? How do we differentiate this? Y equals one upon X. Well, it's the same basic idea. You need to recall uh, what you've done with indices because this can be written as X to the power negative one. Yeah, X to the power negative one. And if that's so, again, what I do is I just differentiate using my normal rule. I bring the power down to the front, so I get minus one and I reduce my power by one. So minus one, minus one becomes minus two. So dy dx is minus x to the negative 2. And what does that power there mean? It means 1 upon x squared. Okay, because remember the negative there means 1 over. Okay, now guys, I'm, I'm sure that uh, for you, that's quite a lot of information to take in in one go. All right, but I've kept it all in one video. And I suggest that you watch it through a couple of times just to, to get a feel of what's going on. Um, and then I think you should be able to attempt exercise 12.1, uh, questions one and two. Uh, have a crack through those, see how you get on. If you're unsure, uh, you can always message me, uh, but I suggest that you watch the video as well a couple of times, because I think that should have all the information that you need. Okay, guys, uh, good to see uh, Good to see you. I hope that was, that was helpful. Take care.